So our lookup value, the value that we will be checking is in B4, okay? We are checking the level, is it level one? Is it level two? Is it level three? Okay, so B4 is our lookup value. That is what we are checking. Then the answers, where are all your answers kept? That is in the details worksheet from here to here. Is it clear? So I have told my, when it, when it says array, okay, is a range of cells that contain text number or logical values that you want to compare with lookup value. Okay, so I have told my computer, my answers, they are all kept from in the details worksheet from A14 to B16. That is where all my answers are kept, okay? Now, remember one thing, guys. Remember one thing. Now, once I enter this lookup, I will be thereafter replicating this formula. I will be pulling it down and replicating it, okay? So B4 will become B5, which is correct, okay? Because when I go to the next row, this should become B5. When I pull this down, it should become B6. When I pull it down, it should become B7. So this is all right. They should keep changing when I replicate the formula. However, this address should remain as it is. When I pull the formula down, when I replicate the formula, it should not become A15, B17. No, that should not happen. This address is going to remain constant, okay? So in order to lock this address, what I do is I select this entire address and I press the F4 key, okay? Now, since you're using a laptop, sometimes you may have to press Fn, F4 because the F4 key might be to increase volume or decrease volume or something like that. So you may have to press Fn, F4. Now in my laptop, I have to press Fn, F4. So what happens, you can see a dollar has appeared before A, which means lock column A, and a dollar has appeared before 14, which means lock row 14. So column A, row 14 has been locked. Column B, row 16 has been locked. Okay, so this entire address has been locked. So no matter, so when I pull my formula down, when I replicate the formula, B4 will become B5, B5 will become B6, B6 will become B7, that will happen. But this address is not going to change. Okay, this array is going to remain from, is going to remain in the details worksheet from A14 to B16. Okay, so I click on OK. Okay, so you can see level one, it displays 230. Is that correct? Level one is 230, correct. Okay, so let's replicate and see if it works. So when I replicate, let's see, is level two 280? Level two is 280, correct. Level three, is it 340? Correct. Level three is 340. So it's working, okay? So we have used the lookup function to find the equipment higher cost, okay? The function that we have used is the lookup function, okay? Moving on to the next question, it says, use one spreadsheet function to display the cost of the ski pass that includes a 20% discount if the cost of the equipment higher is more than 300 pounds, okay? So, we have to put the ski pass price over here and in the details worksheet they have told us the ski pass the ski pass fee is 150 pounds okay so we have to put that over here however in the question paper they have also told us if it is more than 300 pounds we have to give a 20 percent discount okay so basically what we have to do is we have to run an if condition over here we have we check this we check is this more than 300 if it is more than 300 then give a 20 percent discount otherwise no discount okay so let's come to insert function and let's take the if condition okay so over here logical test what are we testing what are we checking we are checking if the equipment higher is greater than 300 that is what we are checking 300 or 300 and more if the cost of the equipment is more than 300, okay? So we are checking whether C4, we are checking whether the equipment higher is greater than 300. If it is true, okay, the computer is asking, okay, what do we do if it is true? So if it is true, there is a 20% discount to be given. Okay, if it is true, if it is more than 300, what we do is we take 300, uh, sorry, if it is true, if it is true, this value, this value minus 0 0.2. Sorry, sorry, my bad, my bad, my bad. If it is true, there is a 20% discount on the ski pass fee now. Okay, so if it is true, there is a 20% discount on the ski pass fee. So we will be taking the ski pass. Okay, if it is true, we will take the ski pass fee and we will reduce it by 20%. Okay, so minus. 
the ski i have taken the ski i have taken the ski pass fee minus it by the ski pass fee times 0 0.2 so 0 0.2 means 20 yeah. percent okay so basically let me explain again i have told if c4 if the equipment hire is more than 300 then take the ski pass fee okay take the ski pass fee which is in the details worksheet b18 and subtract it from 20 percent of the ski pass fee okay so instead of 20 percent i put 0 0.2 if it is false if it is not more than 300 we will charge the usual fee isn't it so in that case if it is false we take the usual fee which is 150 pounds okay now rem remember when we replicate this formula i can't be typing the formula for each row now so i will be replicating it so when i replicate the formula c4 will become c5 c5 will become c6 that's all right however the ski pass fee which is in details worksheet b18 that will remain as it is that is not going to change it's not going to become b19 no it will remain as it is so do not forget to lock it so we select it and press f4 okay we select it and press f4 and then this address will also remain so i'm going to select this also and press f4 okay i hope it makes sense to you okay so i uh, come over here and i say okay so you can see this is not more than 300 so automatically 150 has come over here okay because only if it is more than 300 there is a discount now normally the ski far ski pass fee is 150 pounds okay but if it is more than 300 there is a 20 percent discount this is not more than 300 now so automatically 150 is going to appear over here let's replicate and see if it works so for example you can see this is 340 so you can see there is a 20 percent discount that has been given okay this is 340 20 percent discount has been given okay moving on it says enter a formula to calculate the total cost of the equipment hire and the key pass and the ski pass okay total cost of the equipment hire and the ski pass so over here we basically will have to add both of these isn't it so we can simply say equal all formulas begin with equal this plus this equipment hire plus ski pass will tell us the total cost that they have to pay okay so this as well i'm going to replicate to the other cells okay so remember guys again for this there is no locking of cells there is no locking of cell another word for it is absolute cell referencing so for this there is no absolute cell referencing because when i replicate this c4 should become c5 c5 should become c6 c6 should become c7 and the same here also d4 will become d5 d5 will become d6 and so on okay right replicate all functions and formula for all members we have already done that okay use one spreadsheet function to display the total cost of equipment hire total cost of equipment hire so we can put it over here so we need to find the total cost so we need to add up all these values and the question paper has specifically told you to use a function okay so you can use the sum function okay the sum function would be ideal here so equal sum open brackets so sum basically means add all the selected values okay so from where to where from here to here okay from e4 to e18 do not forget to close brackets okay equal sum from e4 to e18 and i press enter so it adds all the values from here to here okay right moving on then task b1c format the members worksheet so that currency values show the currency symbol with no decimal places so currency values what are the currency values this is a currency value these are all currency values so let's select it and take the pound symbol not the pound sorry the euro symbol my bad the euro symbol okay and they said no decimal places okay over here they said no decimal so over here we can come and reduce the decimal okay decrease right now there are two decimal places let's reduce it to none okay this is also a currency value so let's make it a euro and no decimal places okay then the question goes on to say headings are wrapped to use the space efficiently okay so headings are wrapped meaning inside one cell you can have the text in two lines that's what you call heading is wrapped 
Okay, so uh, I don't think we need to do that, but maybe for equipment hire, we can do a wrap text and then we can make it slightly smaller like this. Okay, then increase the height, obviously. Okay, there you go. Ski pass, I don't think it's necessary. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Uh, if you want, we can wrap text this. There you go. And then the question paper goes on to say all data is visible. So all data should be visible. Everything is visible. Nothing is hidden. And then it goes on to say the column and row head column, the row and column headings and the page header are displayed when printed. Okay, so guys, normally when we do take a printout from here to here, when we print, the header is appearing. Okay, on top, you can see the header is there. However, the row and column headings are not there. A, B, C, D, 1, 2, 3, 4, they are not visible. In order to make that visible, you have to come to page layout and you have to say headings, print them as well. Okay, when you enable that, when you tick this, now when you go to print preview, can you see? A, B, C, D, 1, 2, 3, 4 is visible, okay? Just as the question paper asked you to do, okay? The next thing that they have asked for is save the spreadsheet as task B1. Let's do that. Save it as, okay? Not save, save as. So we change the name to task B1 and we click on save. Then the question paper goes on to say, Print the members worksheet in landscape showing the values on one side. So we have to print it in landscape. So let's come to the page layout, orientation, and let's change it to landscape. Okay. And it should fit one A4 paper. Yeah, it's fitting one A4 paper. Perfect. Uh, the next thing it says, display formula view and ensure all functions and formula are displayed without truncation and will print on no more than two sides of A4. Okay. Uh, print the members worksheet in landscape showing the functions and formula. So now we have to go into formula view because the examiner wants to see the formulas we have used. So for that, we will come into formula tab and we will say two formulas. Okay. So now you can see some of the columns have got very big. Okay, some of them have got too small. For example, you can see these columns data is not properly visible. So what you can do is you can do something which is called auto fit. Okay, so you can click over here. Can you see where my cursor is? When you click over here, all the columns get selected. Then just come and double click on one of the columns. They will all auto fit to content. Okay, they'll auto fit to its content. Okay, just double click once. Can you see they have all they are all auto fitting? Okay, I'll do that again. What I do is I come and click this symbol over here. All the columns get selected. Then I just come and double click on one of the columns. Okay, wait for this symbol and then double click. So now they're all auto fit to content. Okay, so it has to fit inside two A4 papers. Everything should be visible. Everything is visible. Control P and it is going into two A4 papers. Can you see page one of two? So it is fitting inside two A4 papers, perfect. The next thing to be done, uh, so print the members worksheet in landscape showing the functions and formula, we have done that, okay? The next question it says, task B1D, open the worksheet details, okay? So we have to open details next. And in details, it tells us, enter task B1, your name, candidate number, and center number in the header, okay? So we'll do that. Insert header and footer. So task B1, your name, your candidate number, your center number. And then I'm just gonna come onto a blank cell and I'm gonna go back to my normal view, okay? it's There's no harm in working in this view. It's just that I prefer to work in normal view, okay? I do not like this page layout view very much. So I'm gonna go back into normal view. Then the question paper says, Enter a formula to calculate the percentage length of each ski run type. The percentage length, okay? So normally the total length is 108, but blue is 54, red is 36, black is 18. So we have to find the percentage of it, okay? So what we do is equal this divided by the total, okay? It gives us how much? We have to make this a percentage value, okay? So we can come to the home tab and say, convert it into percentage, okay? And then we can replicate it. 
But before replicating, do keep in mind that this address is fixed. This address is constant. It's an absolute cell reference. Okay. So do not, do not forget to lock this particular address. B2 should be locked. So select B2, select only B2 and then press F4, which means lock only B2. When you replicate, B5, B6, B7 will change. However, B2 will remain. Okay. So now you can go ahead and replicate it. Okay, so that's also done. In the next question, it says use one spreadsheet function to calculate the average length of all the ski runs. Average length of all the ski runs. Okay, average length of all the ski runs. So we can use the average formula. Okay, if you come over here, you can find the average formula. Average from B5 to B9, not up to B9, up to B7, isn't it? So remove nine and put seven, B5 to B7, okay? And then press enter. Then it says resave the spreadsheet as task B1. So we resave it. And then it goes on to say, print the details worksheet in landscape showing the values on one side of A4. So print the details worksheet, okay? So we select it, okay? It has to be in landscape. So page layout orientation, landscape, and it should fit one A4 paper. Ensure it's fitting one A4 paper. It is fitting one A4 paper. And the next thing it says is display the formula view and ensure all functions and formula are displayed without truncation and print on no more than two sides of A4. Okay, so once again, come to formulas, say show formulas. Okay, uh, everything is pro properly visible, isn't it? So then you can come to control P. Okay, for me, it's fitting into one A4 paper. They have allowed you to go up to two A4 papers over here they have, okay, allowed you to go up to a no more than two sides of A4, okay. So for me, it's fitting in one, but for you, if it's going into two, no problem, okay, they are allowing you to go up to two A4 papers, okay. Right. So with that, we have come to the end of task B1, okay. We still have a few more activities remaining, task B2, and then we have task B3, as well and then we have a task b4 as well okay so uh let's uh continue from let's start task b2 in our next video okay guys see you in the next video